Yo, what up? You know what it is already? It's the Daily Departed Podcast. Now let me say that again for the actual recorder. What up? Y'all know what it is. It's the Daily Departed Podcast. Back for another week. Um, I don't have any clothes on right now. Because it's too hot. It's just, it's just too hot for clothes. Um, no one's here right now. So I'm good, right? Cheers. Um, hopefully, I don't accidentally get up in the middle of this recording on, I mean, the video recorder. Because um, right before I started, I started thinking, um, is, is frontal nudity okay on YouTube? Like, if it's not in a sexual context, like, I don't, like, I've seen videos on YouTube, you know, uh, maybe a mom breastfeeding, you know, and a nipple shows. Perfectly fine, okay. Um, I, they have births on YouTube. You stumble across birth on YouTube. Baby comes out, see a whole vagina. But, you know, and although those aren't sexual situations, I've never stumbled across a male on YouTube or any social media site with his penis out. But I've watched lots of TV and I've never seen, this is the thing, I've never seen a vagina on TV, like regular TV, whether it's late night, you know, TV or, you know, FX, you know, HBO, whatever. I've never seen that. So but what I have seen, and I've, and I, that's not the AirPod or anything hanging from the ceiling. That's actually the ceiling fan string, but to me it looks like it's like an ear, earphone. But um, no, um, but on TV shows, they do show frontal penises, like frontal male bodies. They show penis on TV shows and movies. But like on a regular movie or regular TV show, you know, obviously not a porno, you don't see a vagina like the actual opening everything. Right. But you can see soft penis on movies and TV shows, which is very strange to me. So that made me think. So if the penis is hard, then you can't show it because it's a sexual thing. So basically you can show situations where it's not hard. I mean, you can show situations where it's not sexual. Like if a man jumps up or it's a prank or something like that, or I don't know the situation. Well, actually, no, this is because I, I was watching um, Mark Ruffalo's new show on HBO. Um, let me see what that show is called because I actually want to watch it. Um, let me see real quick. But anyway, in that show, he um he got jumped by some police officers because he was trying to help his brother or whatever and um they you know they basically hurt his 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 penis so they had to show um they had to you know there was a part where they actually showed his girlfriend at the time looking at it and then they showed pictures of it when it was when he went to the doctor because the doctor had to take pictures of it. So the show is called I Know This Much Is True, which is an amazing show so far. Mark Ruffalo is a oh my a amazing actor. Y'all know I talked about Marvel movies a few weeks ago, maybe two or three episodes ago, and um, I said that all of the characters are great um, as far as you know. Um, the actual characters, like the superheroes, the characters from the comics, but the actors are all great too. Like there's not, again, there's not one actor in any of those Marvel movies that can't act. Like they're all fantastic, right? So basically, um, yeah, so I know this much is true. So in that show, most recently, I watched the last episode last week, hasn't came on tonight yet. It's a short mini series or a rent limited run, I don't know. But I don't think it's going to be like heck of seasons. It's like based on a book. But anyway, they show that. And I didn't ever want to see Mark Ruffalo's penis. And I didn't, you know, it was quick. But they they showed, they showed it, right? 
But anyway, my point is, if I stand up in the middle of this podcast, like I forgot that I'm recording or the um, the doorbell rings or I get too hot and I open the window more, you know, something like that. Right. Would this video get flagged for nudity? Because I think I'd have a case. That's just what I think. But anyway, moving right along. Moving right along. So what we have for today is um, I'm going to start it off with something. So last week was a very sexual episode. No, I don't even say it was very. It's kind of tame. You know, it wasn't too like sexual. But um, I'm going to start this episode off. The Somebody from last week, actually, um, they sent in their question mad late. Like, literally right when I finished. Well, not even right when. Like, five minutes after I finished, they sent in a question. So, I just wanted to acknowledge it. And I kind of had answered the question already anyway and covered it. But to be more specific, I guess I'll do that now. So, the question was, does sex with strangers feel different versus with someone you know or care for? And again, obvious answer. So, I was, so this is the thing. Yes. Overall, yes, it feels different. Sex is going to feel different than it feels with, you know, a stranger, someone you just met versus, you know, someone you know and love and care for. Like, it has to feel different, right? Like, how could it not? And the thing about it is some, like, let me, let me I guess I'll just be real. If we're just talking about the feel of a, of a vagina, like the feel feel of a penis of my penis going into a vagina first let's start off with condoms and safe sex so condoms and safe sex that is an amazing thing that we are able to do thank god for whoever made condoms right because with a condom you can technically you know you can i won't say tech that's not the word i'm looking for you can pretty much have sex without catching a disease or having a baby works 99.9 percent of time or is it 99.8 i got a box i can go check um but as a male you it's hard to explain because we're not we like the woman doesn't have to actually feel the skin for it to feel like something's going in and out of her um am i correct because a woman i'm not saying a dildo or a fake penis is the same as a real penis that's not what i'm saying but and correct me if i'm wrong but using your finger or fingers, or being fingered. See, I'm, I'm going to get this all wrong. I'm going to get this all wrong. But what basically what I'm trying to say is a male putting on a condom is not the same thing as not putting on a condom. It's not even close. Like, yeah, you know, they got the thin ones and stuff like that. It's just not the same. And... Cheers to you for posting this. I saw a few times. Um, condom sex is like diet sex. I don't fully understand that statement, but I, I, I kind of do. And what it's saying is it's not real sex. Like condom, I don't even, I might not even count you as a body if it's condom sex because I'm not, I'm not touching you. Like, yeah, you know, the pelvis or whatever. And again, I'm really naked, so I did just look down. But um, um, legs touch, toes touch, faces touch. But you're not going to catch an STD or get you pregnant by touching legs. Um, you could still catch an STD from, you know, pelvic thrusting naked, you know, I guess crabs. And just as a disclaimer, I have never had a sexually transmitted disease ever in my life. Thank God. Um, but, um, yeah, so, um, 
but a condom, having sex with a condom, is it's it's not the same. It's just not. But I kind of feel like for a woman, it's much. That's what it is. It's much more closer to the real thing than it is for a guy. I'm sorry. The only thing you're not feeling, I mean, is the end when, you know, which is something, again, I won't understand because I'll never be able to feel it. I'll never understand how it feels for cum to be shot inside of you. So in that case, I've heard girls say that it feels amazing or it just feels weird or whatever. But as far as that, yeah, you know, obviously, you know, that's, you know, that's the ending of sex. But we're talking about during it. Yeah, the feeling. And so what I explained to this person that wrote that message is first off, going in and out is one thing, but, you know, you got to kind of think about it. If you make a hole, you know, with your hand real quick and then put your finger in it, tighten it up a little bit, wet it, whatever. That's how I could explain it to it, to, to you. But at the same time, entry is where we feel it the most. Once it in, once it's in, if we're moving around and, you know, just keeping it in and not taking it out, then we might be feeling a little more. But the shaft doesn't really have feeling. I mean, it has regular feeling. That feeling is like touching your arm. But the head of the penis is where the actual feeling is. That's where the feeling is. That's where it's just like, oh, my gosh, that's where all the nerve endings are. Right. Just like the clit is where all the nerve endings are. And if you don't know, the clit has about 18 parts and it actually extends inside of the um, canal, you know, the vagina. Um, it's not just a little bean outside. But um, and that's why there is a technically the, that is the G spot. It's being connected from the inside. Um, so anyway, that's just a little anatomy for you. Most people don't know that, but I read. Mm, sorry. But um, so back to it. The condom, we're just speaking physically right now. The condom takes away the feeling for the guy. 100%. 100%. Yes, it's safe, but it definitely takes away the feeling. Um. I could tell a quick story. Another thing is sometimes when you're in a relationship, we'll say that when you're in a relationship and you're having no condom sex, I don't want to say it's unsafe. You know, if you're in a relationship, hopefully you're still safe because, you know, you're not going to catch anything being pregnant. That's not being unsafe. It's just, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, you just wasn't ready for a baby, but you might get pregnant. But, um, being in a, in a relationship and you're having no condom sex and then if your partner then for some reason, and I'm not even going to go negative and say because you may have been cheating or anything like that, maybe they're off their birth control or something and they say, I want you to use a condom this time. That right there is going to mess everything up. Once you go raw and then try to go back to a condom, is I can, there's nothing I can't even think of anything to describe what that feeling is. That's like, I guess that I get the whole diet sex thing because yeah. Now the story. So after you know me and my ex had, you know, not seen each other for a good minute, you know. We hadn't used condoms in a really long time, like since the beginning of the relationship, basically never went back. We bought them one time and we didn't use them that night. And that continued on for the rest of our relationship. So this most recent situation, when we hadn't seen each other for a few months, you know, she was like, put a condom on. And I was like, okay, whatever. You know, I didn't make a big deal about it. I was like, okay, I put it on and nothing. I got soft. Got, I just, I just went soft. I couldn't stay hard with it on. It was almost like my 
Penis was disappointed. Like, he was sad. He was like, really? Like, I don't get to really feel her? I have to put on a condom? Like, this ain't it. And it really, like, it. I was going, but then it just, I couldn't stay up. So, of course, we took it off. And when we did that, back to normal, back to going in, it was great. But now putting that on with, you know, a stranger so we can go into that now, like. Yeah, you wear one when you're with a stranger, right? And if you don't. You know, maybe there's a little bit of trust already there. Like, you know, maybe the person is maybe they just did something to make you trust them, which is still dumb. You know, that's still pretty dumb. But, you know, it happens sometimes. But um, if you do have to use the condom with or I mean, if you do use a condom with a stranger, it's still going to feel great. Like it's still going to feel great versus if you have to use a condom with your partner. It's going to feel like what the F is going on. So making this full circle back to the beginning. Um, overall, yes, having sex with a stranger feels different than having sex with someone you know. You know their body. You know what they like. You know what they don't like. You're not just going in. Me personally, I feel like I'm like a pro at sex. I will give my one actual, if it's an issue, maybe it is, maybe it's not, but I don't like to go more than once. Maybe it's because I'm, you know, used to just getting it in that first time. Like I try to please, you know, so technically the woman's going to, you know, have two orgasms by the time I have one because, well, you know, I'm going to do what I need to do first. Um, core play, no, foreplay, core play, and more play, right? So, I'm gonna make you come doing the foreplay, and then doing the core play, which is the actual sex, and then if you need a little more, possibly the more play. But it'll be two out of the three at least. So I at least try to make sure you're good before I even go in. Right? Um, but I feel like at the end of the day, I only I do only like it one time. So if it needs to be more than I just feel like either I didn't do my job or you're just greedy. But that's, again, that's if it's stranger. But if you're my woman, oh, like, oh, you want me to do more? No problem. It's just the same way, like, you want me to go get you something from the store? No problem. You want me to go get you some food? No problem. You want me to go change the light bulb? No problem. I'm going to work at it if you're my woman. If you are a stranger, I don't really care anymore, which I kind of went over last week, so I'm not going to go into that. But, yeah, it's just different. It's definitely different. Now, the feeling of vaginas, I mean, to be completely honest, no. Not really that much of a difference. Um, maybe a slight difference that you're not really able to tell, you know, too much. I mean, could I tell if I had a few of them lined up? Possibly. Yeah, possibly. But I think it's going to have more to do with the moistness, the wetness, um, the trajectory of, you know, how the positioning everything is, um, the position, um, you know, the body type, you know, versus it really just like if I'm able to if there was somehow to make it portable and just go in and on have like a few lined up. Yeah, I don't know if I'd be able to tell the difference. Um, they're all pretty great, well, at least the ones that I've experienced. So, I mean, I guess that's enough of that. I don't know if y'all can even make it past all of that nasty talk. Um, 20 minutes talking about that, um, might be a little too much, but we're going to continue because I've been using 
TikTok for the past, I don't know, maybe it's been a month. I don't know. But I wasn't really using it. Like I wasn't viewing videos. But I just started really looking at videos this past week and noticed something. And what I noticed was, you, you know how algorithms go. You like a certain video and, you know, they start showing you more of those. Um, and then that's you, that's how you kind of get your feed. So what I know, yeah, you know, I'm a guy. I'm not even going to blame it on being a guy. I'm a human. I like butts. I like, I don't really care for twerking so much. I think that's kind of like, it's just basic. But, you know. I like seeing girls in nice outfits and leggings or just wearing full on panties. So if I'm scrolling and I see that, you know, I'm going to check it real quick. Oh, let me click like on this. She's pretty, whatever. So that started filling up my feed. But when I tell you, I didn't know that there was so many women that are on TikTok right now just showing their vaginas, not naked, but the print. I'm almost like I'm flabbergasted. I'm really shocked. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? I'm like every girl that I scroll up on. Because I don't really see too many comedy videos no more. Well, I do. Actually, I do see comedy videos, but I don't notice that they're comedy videos because there's a woman in the video with half to nothing on. Um... So I'm just really shocked at that because I'm like, am I using this wrong? I still do my little dumb videos. You know, I did the bottle cap challenge and I actually made glass go everywhere. It worked though. But if I was to go on my TikTok right now, at least the first four videos that I see are going to be a girl in panties. And then think about it is they're not doing anything. It's not like, I mean, they're not. I think it's just because this is the, the natural state of people just chilling. Like me, I'm freaking naked. Right? I'm full on naked right now. So the thing about it is if I was to make a TikTok right now, I'd have to choose on what I'm going to put on. I would have to say, I'm going to at least put on a shirt and I just want to show below my, you know, chest, below my waist. Or I'd have to say, I'm just going to put on underwear because I don't feel like putting anything else on. Or maybe I'm just naive and maybe these women are actually saying, I'm going to purposely wear something that's going to show the print of my vagina so that I will get more likes. Maybe that's true. Maybe it is not true, but all I can tell you is that that's what I see when I scroll my TikTok. And I'm not mad. I'm just shocked. I'm just shocked at how many women I see with legs completely spread open or walking up to the camera with the actual print just showing it. I like I used to call it the triangle, but it's just showing it's like saying hi, right? Um, and if it's not showing, it's some very high cut shorts, you know? So I'm just like, is this what TikTok is really all about? Because I'm seeing these videos with thousands and thousands of views, hundreds and hundreds of likes, thousands of likes even, you know? So I'm just like, I've seen somehow went into the dark side of TikTok. Does that really mean that I'm an actual creep? But I'm going to tell you this. I posted a video. I didn't tag it at all. Like, I didn't put no tag on it, but it's just me. My pants are on, and I'm literally just pulling them up over, you know, the, sh the underwear. And really, I was just trying to show my fancy underwear. So I guess I'm in the same mind state. So that's why I'm not bashing anybody for what they're doing. Let me uh, turn that down. I just want to see how much I was, how much I got right on that video. 
But no, um, I go to it, right? And I check, and I, there's 225 views on me pulling my pants up. They were already up. They were just, I just weren't all the way up. And it's even a sped up video. Now this video has 18 likes and three comments. That's like, that's the ratio, basically. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, it's not even showing my, you know, penis print because it's, that's how far up the pants were already. They were already over that even, right? But I'm like, 225 views. That's like the most views I've gotten on this site. But And I didn't even tag it. So to get views on TikTok, you know, you use hashtags and you get on the For You page. So I didn't even tag it. So how did I get on? I must have gotten on the For You page. You want to know why? Because I only have... How many followers? I only have 75 followers. So unless, let's say, I don't know, about 10 of those followers watched the video over and over and over again. You know, that's how it got to be so much. Which I doubt because I have other videos where I'm actually doing things. Like I said, the bottle cap challenge only got 90 views. Um, I posted an actually, I posted a Batman one, three views only. So what is this weird out, al you know, algorithm? I posted myself laying down and I woke up 75 views. I posted a song, 133 views, right? I think before that, the most I got was, there's one where I have like 200 let me see where that one is. Forgot what video that was. Oh yeah, that's what it was. My shower head being broken has 319 views and 21 likes. So either TikTok literally just only has a bunch of weird people or people that just don't really care about much. This algorithm is strange. But again, like I said, I posted that one without any um, any tags. So something about the nudity on TikTok is going hard because, I mean, I don't get it. So today I wrote a love rap. Well, it wasn't a love rap. It has a love line in it. So what I wanted to do on this quick segment was find my raps that I wrote about love. So let me find one real quick. Let me find one real quick. This is one that I wrote for the special lady who I, you know, like. Um, I'm just gonna read it because I'm gonna go down the list and you tell me what you think. So it says, I know I'm overbearing, but you can handle it well. Wait, I just got a message from, what the heck? A weirdo asking me some questions. Let me see some. All right, let me go back. Start again. I know I'm overbearing, but you handle it well. My last adventure was overwhelming. Overwhelming. I'm trying to bury that twelve. Era una bruja tambi and no breaking that spell. So since the second conversation, I've been feeling you braille. Didn't have to see you to meet you. Personality well, like the animal. Well, meaning it's big. Heard your voice a few times, Ariel. You sung me out of my shell. If love is a battlefield, I've been a prisoner of war. You broke me out of its jail. No longer feeling lonely, I'm rerouted from hell. Check my DM. If it's not from you, I put the phone back down. When it's you, my energy go up, my new cup of coffee now. Learn something new every day, and I copy your style. I hope I teach you too. Take my hand for a minute. Be mine for a while. So that's one. What I wrote today, I'm going to read the one I wrote today. I actually posted that one on TikTok. It's only at like maybe 60 views or something like that. And this one isn't really about love, but 
I took a shot, then I started drinking coffee. Went outside, sat on the porch, let the birds watch me. With my cup, and I daydreamed. Thought about all the women that ever tried to play me. The sun was shining bright, got hot, so I went inside. Grabbed my car keys, asked my son if he wanted to take a ride. Got a blow-up swimming pool. Takes all day to fill up, so I played the video game. Lost about a hundred times. It was so hard, thought I might start crying. Finally passed the level, but it all made me tired. Pressed play on a movie, and then I fell asleep. Woke up in the middle, and I had to rewind. Feeling real lazy, should be writing a book. But instead, I found a wall and just looked. Grabbed a dumbbell and did a few reps. Did 10 push-ups, needed 29. Couldn't do the rest. Thought about a girl, and it made me smile. We don't talk no more, but I still love her style. Had a full day, now it's time to lay down. It's still real hot, fan on, because the AC is down. My nose started bleeding because of the heat. Now I'm headed to the washroom. It got on my sheets. Now, my nose really did start bleeding last night. It was freaking gross. It wasn't a lot, but it was like a little tiny drip. I, I felt it. And my nose bleeds when, when, when it get hot, when I get hot. So, let me move on to something else. Let me find these. This one isn't even really done. Because I, I started writing a few, like about a year ago. But I never finished a lot of these raps. So... I'm so comfortable rolling to your home, no shoes on, coming to beat it down, Fred Flintstone. Tell me what you want to do first, a massage, let me lift that curse. Don't worry about picking what to eat, I got it handled, baby, you can trust me. That's all I got on that one. Um, let's see. Single or not, I'm taking the spot, I'm taking my shot, pouring you one and then we can talk. What's on your mind and what's not? You look like candy enough to make a teeth a tooth rot. This one isn't really a rap. I actually wrote this one about my last relationship, but I I wrote it years ago. Like it was maybe twenty thirteen or twenty fourteen actually. It's actually called Half Naked and it's actually really long, so bear with me and then I'll quit at this one. I only saw part of you. You only showed what you wanted to. No matter what I did, you kept the inner you hid, half naked. I only saw half of you. I hope I haven't seen the last of you. I traveled and explored you many times, but never found your capital. Always a constant battle, and though I knew I'd never win till the end, I never gave in. Because you fight for what you know is right, even if the other side is consumed with lies and drowned by the falsehood of their own light. And I apologize for not being that surprise you waited for. So many other good memories, though. I wish we could have created more. I don't make promises, but I promise you, you should have waited a little more. It's tough and nothing is forever and nothing is for sure. But even though I never saw it or felt it, I still loved you to the core. I searched for your soul a million times, but all I could see was the brown in your eyes. Looking deeper, I saw the scared child in you and I realized I could never leave her, even if I never reach her. And once in a dream, there was a death when you left. I saw myself asking the Reaper, please keep her. I only wanted you to see all of you. Your body held my attention. Your laugh always cut the tension. We mixed until suspension and fell back to earth like a failed mission. One foot in the door to keep it from closing. One foot out turned away forever knowing I should run, but I won't. I will stay and figure out the mystery of you. How could you accept my love, then neglect my love? I never changed, but I guess that's why you did. I guess that's why you were so close to freeing your inner self, but then you hid. I only saw half of you. I was more than satisfied until I realized your smiles were translucent. There was a frown behind them, which made our entire time lies. And I apologize for not being that surprise you waited for. So many other good memories, though, I wish we could have created more. I don't make promises, but I promise you, you should have waited a little more. It's tough, and nothing is forever, and nothing is for sure. But even though I never saw it or felt it, I still love you to the core. Half naked, I only saw half of you. I hope I haven't seen the last of you. I'd cross the universe. Maybe you were saving her for the next, and he would get to see the rest. I hope he appreciates you, but no matter what, you will one day confess I was the best. Meant to be, maybe not, but that's what made me want this more. Knowing that we possibly cheated fate. Knowing that I possibly stole you from your soulmate. I think I'm done with that one. I don't really have much else to put on it. That's the first time I read the whole thing in a really long time. So, ba-boom, boom, boom. That's the love raps. And I have lots more. I have a whole album. Um, 
back to it back back forth and forth um so what else i did this weekend i watched the photograph and i watched lovebirds now lovebirds is on netflix right now you can go watch lovebirds right now on netflix for free it was supposed to be a major motion picture blockbuster out in the theaters but because of covid19 it was released um i believe briefly in the theaters or it was released like to rent or buy but it was on netflix now and then i also watched the photograph now the reason why i'm comparing these two movies is because one they both star Issa Rae. Yay! Cutest sound effects for the yays. And then also because they're both about dating. So in one movie, it's about a couple who, you know, they they love each other, but they don't really get along. They argue a lot. The other one is about a new couple that, you know, they kind of just met and they're trying to figure out what's What's going on? You know, seeing if they're going to really like each other. Now, I'm going to have to say I like the I like the Lovebirds better than the photograph. The Lovebirds was actually really funny um, and it felt more real to me. It just felt a little bit more real to me. Now, I'm trying not to spoil anything about the photographs, you know, because. I'm black and this is a black podcast. It's so black. And um, I know black people want to watch black movies. So I don't want to really tell what happened. But, you know, it's with with Lakeith Stanfield and Issa Rae. And ultimately, they are faced with a situation where they might have to have a long distance relationship. I'll just tell you that much. So, first, let's talk about long-distance relationships. I'm going to start this off by saying I'm 150, 800 billion percent fine with a long-distance relationship. Because I feel like if you love somebody, nothing is going to matter, as you can see. Um, Me being a testimony. When you love somebody, you just love them. It just is what it is. You'll do whatever to be with them. You know, at the end of the day, it's like if you get to see them one one time per year, that 100 percent sucks. But that's your love. You love that person. Like, what else are you going to do? You're going to find somebody else who you kind of like or you kind of love and just go ahead and do things with them just because you can't have that one person you love all the time. No, like stay with the one person. They're busy or you're busy. You you just can't be together. It is what it is. You will find time to be with that person. Um in my podcast with um, Ladybug, I, we kind of talked about having longer distance relationships, kind of, or what if it had to be one or if the person, you know, left or something like that. But I know a couple who had a long distance relationship and they are definitely still together. Um, they weren't super far away, not like another country or, you know, maybe just another step o- stayed over so a flight away a short flight away or you know a kind of a long drive away i could do that i would 100 percent. i i would not mind that at all but again it depends on who we're talking about you know you know if i met some if i met somebody today and i fell in love with them could i do it yes if it's somebody who i'm not really feeling like that but we decide to start a relationship just because it seems convenient or you know, we kind of like each other, you know, it's like I could do it, but I wouldn't want to. So I wouldn't be happy. Right. Um, so, yeah, long distance relationships to me are just all about, you know, putting in the time and the work. You just got to do a little extra. You know, we have FaceTime. We have, you know, airplanes. We don't we have letters. I mean, we have everything like we don't just have to write letters, but I'm saying we have letters. We have ways to get to our loves. If it's a long distance relationship, I don't feel like there's anything to keep you away. Um, Now, money could be a problem because it does get expensive. You know what I'm saying? It definitely gets expensive, but that'll just drive you to to do more. In my past situation, I should have went to go see my uh, my ex. But 
I just kind of like every time I got ready to start planning or getting ready to go or think even thinking about it, you know, she decided to come here because obviously she's from here. She still has family here. So, you know, she would just come here. So I didn't have to. But I still wish that I would have said just because you're coming here, you know, doesn't mean that I'm not going to come see you. Because the last time she came out here, I we were planning I was, we were planning on either me going there or just meeting somewhere in the middle, like Vegas or something like that. But she said instead she wanted to come here instead of doing that because she had plans, big plans out here, actually. So we kind of deaded that. But I still wish that I would have went out there. Like if she would have, you know, if things would have worked out, I would have still went to wherever she was afterwards. I would have just sucked it up and said, forget it. Like, yeah, you come here, but I'm going to go there wherever you are. Um, so again, I guess I got to say this now, but Miss Ladybug Chanel hasn't responded to any of my messages. So I'm, but I'm still going to use her as an example. If I was to have the, you know, honor of being with her, she travels, as you learn from the podcast, I would go to where she is. You know, I would definitely do that for her. So long distance relationships don't, you know, really mean like that doesn't mean it's the end all for me, at least some people. Yeah. But for me, no, it's not. a. It's If you love the person, you're going to do whatever you need to do to get to them. Now, why is she not talking to me? Probably because. Um, she doesn't really like me like that. And I kind of got a little assertive. Not, I'm, I don't want to make that sound bad. But, you know, I kind of let it be known that, hey, I like you for real. I want to see what's up. So maybe she didn't like that. Who knows? Um, now moving on to couples that argue a lot. See, my thing is... With couples that argue, again, I don't think it's a horrible thing. It does get annoying when you're in that situation sometimes, but you love each other. So an argument about dishes or just a disagreement about a TV show or an opinion or something like that, that's not the core of your relationship. So it doesn't really take you out of that mode, but it can. Some instances, maybe it can. But if I was in a relationship where we argued all the time, I mean, what do we do after? Do we make up? You know, when you say, because even when you say all the time, it's not really all the time. You know, there's great times in between. So, also, I sometimes I feel like if somebody's not willing to argue with you, that just means they don't care anymore. Like, if they don't want... I'm not talking about, like, a fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about calling each other names. Not that kind of argument. I'm just talking about, you know, like, a disagreement, a debate. If your woman is just like, hey, whatever, whatever you say, I don't care, then she might not like you no more. If your guy is telling you whatever you say is fine, maybe he's just kind of wimpy. And he doesn't want to argue with you because he, you know, he knows that, you know, he can't win or whatever, you know? But if we're talking about just like a regular argument, I don't know, maybe we're talking about the argument of a, the ending of a movie. You like that she didn't kind of thing. You know, it's just stating your opinion on something. It's just letting the other person know, like, I care enough to actually have this conversation with you. Because in my situations, I'm not really, you know, seeing anybody steady. So if I see any negativity, more or less, I'm either going to go in and that's it. And I'm going to think I'm right no matter what. Or I'm just not going to say anything. I'm going to give you the okay. Now, if you get the okay, that just means like I'm done. I don't care enough to talk to you about it. So that was kind of like the situation with the two couples in both of those movies. Um, now, another thing is. <sighs> I was watching. I saw a Donald Glover clip. And the Donald Glover clip led me to Chris Rock. So I'm on YouTube, basically, obviously. And Chris Rock was talking, you know, I forgot which skit it was. I mean, not skit, but I forgot which show it was. But anyway, he's his point in this, you know, clip is what I mean to say. Clip was women don't like nice guys. 
Now, before you say that's not true, I'm going to say it's obviously, you know, probably not true for everybody. But in general, in general, from what I've learned and from what I've seen, not only do women not like nice guys, but they love ugly dudes. And I've said this before, too. It may sound like a joke. And I'm not necessarily judging dudes, but I know if somebody is ugly or attractive or or not. Excuse me, I burped. Um, but we'll just stick to the nice thing. When I was in the seventh, when I was in the eighth grade, I had a, a, a girlfriend. And again, I talk about these not being real girlfriends because I, either they didn't last long or, you know, we was young. Not nothing really to invest in. But, you know, we'll call her my girlfriend because I said, hey, will you be my girlfriend? She said, yes. Um, she was the new girl in the school. I think I mentioned her before. She was a new school, new girl in the school, the, the baddest girl in the school at the time, or at least one of them. She was up there. Um, if there was a top three, she was definitely in the top three. Um, and we lasted about a month. And the weekend we broke up, what happened was one of my friends came to me that Monday and was like, did you see beep at the party? Did you hear what? He was like, she's a straight hoe. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Now, looking back, I don't think she's a hoe for this at all. I didn't even know what was the big deal. But anyway, he was like, she was on every dude in the party. He was basically saying like she was dancing, you know, doing the freak dance with everybody in the party, right? And I'm like, okay. I didn't really trip that much. Again, I was in eighth grade. Well, I don't know what the heck I was supposed to do. So she comes to me and she tells me straight up, hey, I think we should break up. Or, you know, I want to break up with you because you're too nice. And I was. I'm still nice. But I didn't listen to that when she said it. I mean, I didn't take heed. I continued my life and I continue to be tonight to, to I continue to be nice to the women who I, you know, engaged with the women that I loved. Um, and but what I've learned is even like my brother has told me a few times, like you should just call it a B word talking about my ex. He's like, you should just call it a B word. And I'm like, there's some very, very odd truth to it. Because I think what it does, it like it goes back to the whole arguing thing. It creates conflict. It creates conflict. And if there's no conflict, there's really nothing to talk about because things are not going to be perfect all the time. You get what I'm saying? Like. You're, you're not showing that you care. So I'm not saying it would have worked, but it would have been conflict. So maybe that wouldn't be the right word. But even to say that, she said, I know I'm that and I don't want to be that to you. So if I would have said it, that would have been acknowledging some truth. Right. That would have been acknowledging like, yeah, you you you're that. But also, I didn't recognize it as that. I didn't look at it as that. Even if that was who she was being, I just looked at it because I've said this before. If that is a true statement, I don't look at it as a bad thing per se. That's a defense mechanism to go there. So as a male, maybe I did something to make you act that way, right? I'll put it all on me. I'm a man. I don't blame a woman for nothing. I just don't. If a woman is not feeling me, that's on me. She's not crazy. It's not her fault. It's because I'm just not doing what I need to be doing to make her want that. That's how I feel. That's how I feel, right? So, again, there's numerous examples. Some are probably personal, so I don't really want to talk about those. But there's numerous, numerous, numerous examples of women liking, let's just not even say mean, but liking hardcore, nice, hardcore, not nice dudes. 
a-holes, jerks. Women love that. From what I my from my experience. Now, yes, there's women who I've been nice to and they love that too, but it's about having that balance. And I think I didn't I don't and didn't have that balance. I'm getting that balance because I have a lot of women who I don't really like like that that still kind of, you know, come around. Not so much anymore because I think I've off-balanced it and became more of a jerk to them to where they don't hit me up anymore. That's okay too. But I think being able to stand up to a woman is what a woman actually wants. Being able to say no and putting the foot down, I feel like a woman wants that. And these aren't things that I don't know already. These are just things that I haven't really practiced because... I'm just a little too carefree sometimes. I just don't care that much. If it's going to make that much of a problem, I'm like, eh, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, do this, do that. No big deal. Who cares? I don't want to argue about everything, but I don't mind arguing about things. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it's just it's, it's kind of like finding that balance of showing that you care, but also showing that, you know, I'm not all the way a jerk, but I'm all, but I can be, you know, hopefully this is, I don't think the last part of what I'm talking about is making too much sense, but yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I just, I just feel like being mean or being a jerk women kind of look at that and they say, oh, he will stand up for me, you know? So I guess, you know, I missed, I missed, I missed that at some point. It's because it's really not that I don't care. I'm just a little bit more positive with things. Um, so yeah, we about to go an hour. Um, I think that's about it. So again, you know, if y'all got anything to, to tell me or, you know, hit me up or something like that, you know, like, let me know, you know, just, just hit me up. Let me know. I'm, I'm willing to talk to y'all. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I'm willing to talk. Um, something that I was thinking about, I'm trying to get back to it. Don't know if you can tell. I'm trying to get back to it. I'm trying to think about what I wanted to say. Um, let me see something real quick. Let me see something really, really quick. Yeah, I can't think of it. Probably wasn't that important. But anyway, maybe I'll think of it for next episode. So this is another episode of the... This is number 50, y'all. This is number 50. The anniversary is really coming up. Today, the 24th. Let's see when the next... The next Monday. The tw So Monday, 25th. But the next Monday will be June 1st. So somehow within there, I think I published the first episode on actually June 1st. Let me check that real quick, too. Let me check that real quick. Let me go to Buzzsprout. Shout out to Buzzsprout. When was my first episode recorded or uploaded? I know I recorded it in like the last week of May, but... It took a minute for it to actually post and all that. So let me see. So the first episode was posted on June 6th. So technically, I will have the full year of episodes. 52 episodes. Meaning I stayed consistent the whole entire year of dropping these episodes. But I really didn't. But I played catch up. To stay consistent because, like I said, there was like about a month and a half or so, almost two months that I didn't record. But not only did I get back on it and recorded all of these episodes, I recorded extra episodes and started 
the other podcast, the Dippin' Sauce podcast. I think we did at least four or five of those. And I also got some bonus episodes in here. So I hooked y'all up for this year. I hooked y'all up for this year. And I hope y'all loved it. So I don't got nothing special planned for 51 and 52. But I can tell you, can't stop, won't stop. And that's that. I'm going to keep going. Y'all going to see the evolution. Maybe I'll stay single for the rest of my whole life. And y'all will be amazed at that. Or maybe I'll get a girlfriend and then a wife and have another kid. Y'all will be amazed at that if you continue to follow along this amazing journey with me. Um... So, yeah. Oh, and one thing I wanted to notice, I mean, not note what, what I'm talking about. One thing I wanted to acknowledge is Miss Ladybug actually posted, you know, kind of like, you know, about not directly about my podcast, but she did mention, um, you know, one of the questions, you know, about dating apps being taboo. And it was cool to see a lot on her end of things. I guess she knows more positive people or is in more in, in her network more than me. But a lot of them were talking about the positive sides of it. And even her herself um, mentioned being in positive situations. So I just want to shout that out right there that, you know, you can find love on dating apps. I just choose not to. But um, I wish I would have found love on Instagram. And that's the end of this beautiful episode i love y'all have a fantastic day for me right now i'm gonna upload this now i'm not even gonna wait till monday because I, I love y'all let me get you i got your back i'm gonna upload it now but for me the time is 6 54 7 o'clock so um i still got a little bit of day left this is a memorial, memorial day weekend i hope y'all have fun peace out You still see me, don't you?